Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon Breakdown. And today, in this Help Me Devon Breakdown, I'll be showing you Orange Clip, which is a wave shaper slash soft clipper that is inspired by a famous Dawes sound. Reason why I'm not saying any names is because I don't want any smoke. Now, what are we gonna do today? What we're gonna do is I'm going to play you a bunch of different sound sources. We're going to test out the plugin. I'm going to also break down the plugin and its capabilities, as well as all of its parameters and things of that nature. One, how do I use Orange Clip? Well, the way that I'm using Orange Clip in my workflow is I'm using Orange Clip to give me more perceived loudness without eating up so much headroom which in turn is making my limiter at the end of my chain work less, which in turn is allowing me to make my tracks so much louder from a perception standpoint without eating up headroom. What you're gonna see is I'm able to use this plugin, hit at the same exact peak that it was before, but it's going to appear much louder when I actually play it within the scheme of the sound. Now, I will be transparent and let you know that Schwab Digital did sponsor this video, even though I'm already a massive fan and I've had it for a while now using it on my mixes. But at the end of this video, I want you to draw your own conclusions to have your own discernment about the plugin and you decide for yourself. I'm merely here to break it down and show you how I personally been using it in my workflow. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, let's get to it. Let's have some fun. Okay, so first and foremost, I know you just want to hear this thing. So. Let's get an idea of what it sounds like and what it does and how I've been using it in my workflow as far as everything is concerned. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to look right here. What you'll notice is before soft clipping, this bass was hitting like this. Wait for it. So you can see that the that the actual peaks of that particular bass was hitting at about negative 14.5. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to use Orange Clip to increase the perceived loudness of this bass, make it sound so much louder without actually going above 14.5. So I'm gonna make it hit the same exact peak, but it's going to appear so much louder. Let me just use it, let me just do it and show you how I've been using it. So check this out. Negative 14.5, remember that number. Okay, I'm going to play this back and forth. I want you to also pay attention to the peak of this actual sound as far as the voltage that is um, coming in to this actual track with this bass. I'm gonna bypass this back and forth. Note, they are hitting at the same exact peak, negative 14.5 before and after. Same exact peak, okay, without first. That's how I'm using Orange Clip right now. It is giving me so much more out of a specific sound without changing the actual headroom or voltage of the actual uh, sound source. So it appears so much louder to your ears and to how it is rolling out of these speakers, but from a voltage standpoint in this computer, in this DAW, it's literally hitting at the same exact peak. And that's how I'm able to get my tracks so much more louder uh, within uh, my uh, mixes and things of that nature as of now. I've been using this for a while now and it's really, really been just doing wonders for me as far as getting more out of a sound. Now granted, there are other soft clippers out there amazing ones that I use for different reasons. But when it comes to me trying to get something that has harmonics that really, really just has like this crushed sound in the high end and kind of beefs things up, this has a specific sound that I've actually been gravitating to when it comes to individual tracks as well as buses from time to time. So 
Let me show you it on a kick, for instance. And I'm, long story short, going to do pretty much my same exact method that I use it as far as how I'm using it. I use it a little different from what I've seen other people do, but nonetheless, I'm gonna break down the parameters, why I go about it that way with using the ceiling to kind of just kind of engage the clipping. I'm gonna show you all that stuff, but just stick with me. I just want you to hear what it sounds like first and foremost, and then I'll explain everything about it as far as how I use it and why I'm changing the orange knob to that uh, number and things of that nature. I'm gonna break it all down. So now let's look at this kick. This is the kick. Let's turn orange clip off. Cool, so that's our kick. Let's actually take a look at what the peaks are on this kick. So this is the peaks on the kick. Cool, so the peaks are at 11.6 dB, negative 11.6 dB. So what I'm gonna try to do is get more of that perceived volume out of it without changing the voltage or, that, or the uh, peak from being 11.6 negative. All right, let's do it. Cool, before peaks were negative 11.6. After orange clip, peaks at negative 11.6. Let's bypass it back and forth and see what we, uh, what we did without first. So I was able to get the kick to feel or sound louder in that regard, and I'm getting a little bit more of a kick that I know is going to cut through on in, in a mix because I'm adding harmonics to that actual top side of the kick. I can hear those harmonics. I can feel that crushness uh, at the top and the things of that nature. And even if I feel like I'm losing just a little bit of low end, for instance, I can literally go down and just add a little bit of that back in. A lot of times what I notice when I use compression, or any kind of dynamic processing on low end uh, material, sometimes it may feel like you lose a little bit of the low end that was once there. But I can always just take that, bring a little bit of that back with uh, EQ or things of that nature. But nonetheless, the sound that I'm getting out of that kick from a perceived loudness standpoint is absolutely just, I just love the sound of it. And I know that it's going to help me to get the entire mix so much louder uh, because I'm not eating up any headroom to accomplish that sound of loudness and perception. Let's use it on one more instrument and then I'll break down the plugin, show you why I use it in this way and my method and the whole nine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up on this particular percussion sound. So this is the percussion sound that we have right now. Cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use it on this percussion sound. I'm going to try again to increase the perceived loudness of it without eating up the headroom that it previously was. Uh, so long story short, let's have this right here. Let's look at what it was peaking at in the first place. So this is what it was peaking at before. Let's do that one more time. Cool, I'm seeing peaks at negative 15.3. So I'm seeing peaks at about negative 15.3. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm trying to increase that perceived loudness right now. So let's do it.
Okay, now let's take a listen to the before and after and get an understanding of what we did without first. Remember the number, negative 15.3 is what it previously was at. Okay, let's do it without first. If you have ears, you can clearly hear that perceived loudness of that particular percussion loop is far louder from a perception standpoint, but understand that we have not eaten up any headroom in that regard. Why is that so powerful and important and is just an incredible ability to have with this particular soft clipper is because now I've increased the volume of that sound source, but when I take it into my limiter to make it overall loud as far as the master or whatever it is, it's it's just not working as hard. And because it's not working as hard, because those transients are, I guess you could say, more controlled or being shaved off, now you're able to bring up the volume of the entire record or song without actually having that limiter duck and have to work so hard to really attack your transients so much. You're getting a more controlled sound, one, and two, you're actually adding harmonics uh, to the actual signal that is in turn increasing the perceived volume of the entire track. It has a very pleasing way of how it does it to the top end, making this kind of crushed kind of top end sound that we've heard for years, um, but now, here it is for me in my particular DAW in Pro Tools, and that's why I'm most excited about it because I've gotten mixes from the other DAW, and I've had to re-emulate that sound, uh, which was very hard to do because it was very different. But now this plugin is allowing me, nonetheless, to get that perceived volume from certain sound sources uh, without eating up any headroom. So now that you've heard the plugin, let me just break down what this plugin is, how it works, and just my reasoning and method for how I use it and things of that nature. So let's go on over and keep it on this particular uh, percussion loop, for instance. So right now we have another percussion loop. I'm gonna put it back to its default settings. And let's just go through the parameters of the plugin in general. So right here we have uh, this indicator that says clip. Basically this just displays how much clipping is happening with the particular waveform, which is basically allowing you to see how much are you shaving off when it comes to your sound source, getting those transients and shaving things off and how much clipping is actually occurring. Right here you have the ceiling, which is allowing you to change the actual output ceiling of uh, the particular sound. Granted, you can drive into the ceiling of zero and still get that perceived loudness that you're looking for as far as the clipping to start occurring. But for me personally, I've liked the workflow of bringing the ceiling down till it starts to engage naturally from what is actually the input signal that is coming into it. Nothing wrong with that or saying this is the right way to use it, but for me personally, I just like that feeling of just bringing it down until I start to hear one and two, start to see uh, that soft clipping occurring. Because once I start to raise that input, I start to hear it get louder. Instead, I'd rather bring down the ceiling until it's not actually getting louder, but literally I can hear the soft clipping occurring. So I can really hear what is happening with the wave shaping and things of that nature. So that's why I'm using the output ceiling instead to kind of just like catch it right there. And then I'm actually hearing it from not so much a volume standpoint, but rather just a harmonic standpoint of what it's actually occurring uh, when it's actually, um, you know, wave shaping or soft clipping or hard clipping in that regard. So that's the ceiling. Next, we have the input uh, slider, which obviously allows you to drive signal into that output ceiling. Once it goes past that output ceiling from uh, an indicator standpoint, you will start to have clipping occur, which you'll then see in the clip indicator. Self-explanatory, pretty easy to understand. Next over here, we have the orange uh, wheel, which basically is allowing you to choose between a softer knee or a harder knee. Now, before going into what that means and how that affects you, let's just listen to the difference between soft and hard. I think this is the best way to show you or get you to understand what the difference is between a soft knee and a hard knee uh, in that regard. It has a big difference and can play a big uh, uh, part of your sound as far as what you're mentally trying to accomplish and stuff like that. 
So let's solo this. And what I'll do is I'll go from the softest setting to the hardest. So I'm going to get soft clipping to occur, and then we'll go from the softest to the hardest. Pay attention to the characteristics that you pick up on. So has completely two different sounds uh, as far as what you would probably be going for. When I go more to the hard side, I feel like I'm getting this brighter, more brighter saturation uh, in my top end where it feels a little bit more crushed. I feel like things feel a little bit more, more uh, just aggressive in that nature, which would be great for drums. That's why you saw me using it and going more to that harder side uh, with the knee when it came to those particular sound sources that I was showing you. I wanted the drum sound to feel more aggressive and have a little bit more bite, adding that harmonic content to the top where it feels a little bit more crushed. When I go more to the softer uh, knee, you notice that it feels softer, where it feels like things feel a bit darker, kind of feels like things are a little bit smoother in that regard. My brain is perceiving it as a darker tone, which is the softer knee, and a brighter tone, which is the harder knee, in particular to this particular orange clip plug-in. That's the way my brain is, my ears are perceiving it. But I'm also noticing that I'm getting more aggression out of the harder knee as opposed to the softer knee, feeling a little bit smoother as it's shaving off that peak and not so hard and aggressive on the hard knee. So I'm noticing dark versus a... Uh, more brighter sound when it comes to the soft and hard knee. It's the way I can, the easiest way I can kind of throw it at you and describe it. Okay. Next thing we have here is this uh, link knob. And what this link knob is going to allow me to do is kind of how we were talking about the output ceiling where it's basically linking the input and output to each other. So when I turn up the input or driving that, single in, that signal into the ceiling, the output is matching itself to that amount of signal that I'm driving into it to help me reserve that headroom or keep the headroom in line when I'm doing it. Like I told you before, there's a bunch of different ways that you can use it to drive signal into the clipper. But for me personally, I've just been using it with the ceiling coming down and just bringing up that output ceiling uh, as far as the output on the other side, not the ceiling, but the output how I want. But this is another way that you can actually use it just to clearly and easily just drive into it and just compensate for all that volume or all that headroom that you're actually losing and stuff like that when you're driving the signal up into um, the ceiling of zero or wherever you have your ceiling. Simple. Then on this side, you have the wet and dry slider, which are linked. And this is allowing you to decide how much of the dry signal you want in this in the actual sound source or how much of the wet signal you want in the sound source. The great thing about this is, and you may be saying like, okay, well, why would I use this or how would I use this is, for instance, parallel. If you were, say for instance, trying to have a blown out version of a particular kick or some sound source mixed into your signal, then what you could do is you can completely annihilate it in orange clip and then decide how much of that wet signal, which you can see right here, you want to be in that dry signal. So it just gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility when it comes to what you're trying to achieve in the entire sound source. So that's what that is, okay? Here's your wet, here's your dry. You can unlink them and decide for yourself as far as what you want into it. You can also solo it too, just to hear what the wet signal is alone and what the dry signal is alone, which is awesome. The last thing you have on the right hand side, and then we'll go into the plugin, is the output, which just allows you to control or say how much you want the final output of the actual uh, sound source to be, which you've seen me use. Then inside, let's go under the hood, whew, is the settings. And basically in these settings, it's allowing us to manipulate the over sampling um, algorithm. Now, this is very interesting because I had the opportunity to literally ask Ryan about his oversampling algorithm. Because personally to me, 
oversampling can be a gift and a curse in some plugins. Sometimes it sounds great. Sometimes it feels like it does more harm than good. With some plugins, I felt like oversampling makes my signal feel a bit softer and kind of disrupts what was there as far as the timber of the actual uh, sound source and things of that nature. But I noticed with this plugin that it sounds pretty pleasing, which was striking to me because I usually don't run into plugins that I like the oversampling all the time. So I asked Ryan a question about his oversampling. Check this out. In the plugin, and thank you for putting uh, the oversampling option now Yo, in Go Clip. It actually sounds like so good. It's like, so with the oversampling, it sounds way better. It sounds way better. Yeah. Even yeah. Go Clip. I literally went back to some mixes and like A B. Like, yeah. and I was like, oh my gosh, it sounds so much better. Oh, when we updated Go Clip with the oversampling, we I like went hard on my developer, and they he developed this whole other like what's it called. Uh, mm anti-derivative, anti-aliasing filtering, and this like longer downsampling filter, low pass filter process that right. takes like more samples, like 64 sample delay added to it. Uh -huh. And he rewrote the whole oversampling thing where it, it completely changed the sound of it. Like when it first came out, it doesn't sound anything like the way it sounds right. now. Okay, with that being said, all oversampling algorithms are not made equal. And this one in particular, I actually really enjoy, seriously. So what you can see is the settings. You see real-time quality, offline quality, and then you see the type linear phase versus minimum phase. Now, when it comes to linear phase, there's a lot of arguments, there's a lot of things online that you can read about when it comes to linear phase and things of that nature. Uh, sometimes linear phase can bring you more problems than it does good. Uh, sometimes it's very necessary uh, with the sound source. When it comes to low end in particular, sometimes linear phase can give you this thing called pre-ringing, which can alter the sound of your transients just a little bit and make them feel like they are, for the lack of better words, hitting as hard as it once was. With this particular one, I'm not noticing that. I'm actually feeling like I'm getting a little bit of a stereo image widening of the sound and this could just be my perception as far as how I'm, how I'm hearing it but it actually feels good for the most part as far as the linear phase that I'm having on it then you have mini minimum phase which is claiming and saying that it affects the phase um as far as that uh timber of your record uh less we'll make a, you can make your own discernment about it and what we could do is I'll actually play it for you this right here is actually, as far as the real-time quality, is actually upping how much of the oversampling you're doing, four times, eight times, et cetera, going to extra pristine, which if I click extra, extra pristine, you see that that then changes to 16 times oversampling in, lin in the linear phase mode. If I go to pristine, I'm at eight times, and if I go to high, I'm going to four times. So all three of these have a different sound make your own decision as far as it i'll actually play some stuff and let you hear what those three differences sound like and then if you look over here it's the same exact thing but it's the offline quality see it like this and this is how i believe uh i'm i'm to perceive the offline quality sometimes we do real-time bounces and then sometimes we do offline bounces if you're doing an offline bounce make sure that you just have the real-time quality and off-time quality same thing so that when you bounce your record you're still getting that same exact quality that you were getting in the real-time quality just pay attention to that make sure you have that on anytime i change it to high i leave it on high and i make sure i change offline to high just in case i wind up doing an actual print but from an offline standpoint with just straight plugins and no outboard gear keep that in mind so let's take a listen to the actual oversampling um, which I was very impressed with because it didn't destroy the song or it didn't make me feel like my transients were just getting annihilated and murdered. Let's get some soft clipping going. And then what I'll do is I'll start to go through and click through uh, four times oversampling, six, uh, eight times oversampling, and 16 times oversampling. So let's do it. So let's get some soft clipping popping. Cool. So now we got some soft clipping going. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start to change the oversampling quality as I go. So let's press play and then let's change the oversampling quality. Listen to the difference in the sound.
So let me say this, the biggest difference that I'm hearing when I'm switching between those algorithms as far as the oversampling is, the higher I go into the oversampling, I'm noticing within my stereo image, and maybe someone could bring this up uh, later uh, when they're using it too, to notice this. I'm noticing I'm getting a greater perception of the image. Check this out, just to tell me if I'm bugging. When I'm listening to it, and I'm gonna play it off to extra pristine, tell me if you noticed a bigger detail in the panning. So when I'm hearing that true for true for true for true for true for I'm feeling like that panning has gotten a lot deeper and more uh just larger. The difference with it going from left to right seems greater and more like it has more depth and detail. Pay attention to this because I keep telling you every time I've used this oversampling, I notice a difference in my image, which Maybe I'm crazy, maybe my ear is super sensitive, or maybe someone else is hearing this as well. Let's go from off, then let's go to extra pristine. Listen to the stereo image, okay? Without first, this is off. It's wild to me because I actually feel like I'm getting the sensation of more depth as well as just a just a more three-dimensional stereo mix. Call me crazy, I, I understand, and you know, this could be totally subjective, but my ears, my monitors, and what I'm perceiving it as, I even hear that little moment with that little kind of tiny kick just feels like I can feel it. I can feel like it's more towards the back and like the other percussions is a little bit more up in the front. And that's why I use this sample because this sample really kind of sparked my ear for it and kind of made me pick up on it where I feel like I was getting a little bit more depth and width out of the actual oversampling uh, in general. Now, I could be totally wrong about this as far as how I'm perceiving it and things of that nature, but that is how I'm perceiving it. And I've actually been enjoying it when it comes to some sound sources. On this percussion type of stuff, as far as loops and stuff, I've really been enjoying it because it's feel like it's just adding another layer of sound onto the actual percussion sound uh, from what it was before, which is awesome. I'm so glad that Schwab Digital, you know, sponsored this video in the whole nine and gave me the chance to show you this because I've been using it at nauseam. I've been using this thing uh, like a madman and a lot of good friends of mine have been as well. And we've all just been really, really just like, just excited about it because we have been trying, let me not say we, I have personally been trying when I get mixes from the other dolls and things of that nature, um, to achieve this sound, to achieve a sound that has that modern day kind of crushiness and just uh, harmonic content that I've been looking for without actually eating up headroom and, and things of that nature. I'm finding some very interesting ways to use Orange Clip. I hope that you saw some interesting ways that maybe you could start using it for yourself and things of that nature. But like I said, after watching this video, you decide for yourself. If you like the way it sounds, do your thing. It's You can get it anywhere. It's at schwabdigital.com. I'll leave a, a link in the description. Um, I really, really am a big supporter of Schwab Digital. I love Ryan. Um, such a great guy and just I love what he's doing, um, and I'm just a big fan, and um, I'm thank you, thankful, so thankful that he's actually supporting uh, this channel and uh, everything that we have going on and things of that nature. And I hope that you enjoyed that, um, and I want you to know that you know these are some. It's a really good dude, man. I really appreciate him and and his team, and just I appreciate this plugin and the products that they're putting out. So. Uh, without further ado, uh, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, make sure that you uh, follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram and that you're listening to that Audio Nerds podcast every single Wednesday. You can also watch that episode with Ryan where he breaks down a bunch of other stuff, including gold clip uh, gems that he kind of let me know and just the whole mindset and stuff like that behind this particular plugin. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. But I hope y'all enjoyed. Let me know what other plugins you would like for me to break down next 
or just try out and experiment. Um, and uh, yeah, y'all, until next time.